Welcome back Team Forever, back again with another review video and today I'm reviewing Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6 Episode 2. Alright, so this episode started off with Stevie J, started off where we left off last week with Stevie J and Jocelyn meeting up. Basically, Jocelyn said, you know, you haven't seen me since I've been pregnant, this, that, and the other. And then Jocelyn said, I understand if you don't want to be in my baby life because you got so many kids. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, so Stevie said he'd been in all his kids' life. Jocelyn said, I only served you with the papers so that you can come around. I don't really want to put you on child support. I just need you to come around because you haven't seen me. Um, Jocelyn said to Stevie that she moved into Miami. And Stevie said, no, you're not. Not of the baby mom. Not of the baby mom. You got to stay here. And in my head, I'm thinking, huh? Because later on in the episode, he his when his daughter came, she don't live in the same state as him. A lot of his kids don't live in the same state as him, I think. I don't know for sure. So what's the big deal about her moving? Because a newborn, you got money. You can travel to go see him. Or her, should I say? Stevie said no, damn, blah, blah, blah. She started crying. Stevie's like, oh, I used to love this girl. This, then the other, trying to get sympathy, blah, blah, blah. Stevie gets up and, like, touches her stomach. And, of course, Jocelyn feel all good about that because he is showing, you know, sympathy for her or whatever. And I knew she was going to later on tell somebody, yeah, Stevie got up and he touched my stomach. I think he want me back or something like that. But anyway, next we go to the Jasmine scene. I don't know how she ended up on the show. This is another scripted scene from this show. How did Jasmine just so happen to get her own scene? Now she in the credits. She got she a full time member of the show. Um, jo Jasmine explained her situation with Kirk. How she met him, what happened, and what's been going on. Um, she admit that she told the wrong people at the party because she was drunk, which I say that's a scripted scene, but whatever. We meet Rod, her boyfriend or whatever, and he's into music, and he talk about how he worked with Young Jock before Young Jock got big. Not that he's really big now, but whatever. Um, Jasmine, oh, Jock, Rob said, or Rod, he said he only was in jail for eight to nine months, and this Jasmine cheated on him and had a baby. And I'm like, dang. You couldn't wait eight to nine months. There's people that wait. I mean, look at Papoose and Remy Ma. They waited years. There's people I know that wait years. She couldn't even wait nine months. Like, And I just, I kind of, I'm starting to think that this could be fake. Because they keep talking about how he's a scam artist. And I don't know. It, it, it seems like it could be fake a little bit. Because... Eight to nine months, she cheated on you and had a baby, and you just sitting there so cool with her. I don't know. And he looked like he didn't uh, beat a couple women in his day, to be honest. He looked like he fight. <laughs> um, then we go to Tommy scene. She got out of jail after just 24 hours. Um, she goes home, and she fights with her mom. We meet her mom, and this kind of was a little bit uncomfortable to watch because they mother and daughter, and they just fight like this. Um, security got involved, um, the bailsmen got involved, or whatever. Um, it wasn't really, I'm not that interested in Tommy's scene. It wasn't enough to really, not really that big a deal. Then we go to Mama D's scene. She get reintroduced. She's performing her song, um, In That Order. It's so funny seeing her dance like that, because she's like 50 years old, and she just, like, performing the song. But she calls, um, Ernest a bad husband. He a nothing husband and stuff. So they have her problems. Um, Mama D sit down with Ernest and she complained about his mom. Um, Ernest said that the mom is moving to ATL, to Atlanta with them. So now Mama D is even extra mad. And I'm just sitting here like, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Mama D and Ernest is like 50, 60. And not his mom is in the picture. This is so weird because she got to be like 80. So, it's just like, these are some old, old people acting like young, young people. Like, this is something that you see with 16-year-olds, not 16, 18-year-olds and they parents. But we seeing it with 50-year-olds and they parents. Like, this is just weird. Ernest putting his 80-year-old mama before his 50-year-old wife. It's just so weird. This is a weird scene. Mama D, then at the restaurant, knocks over some water. Talking about, it's not about spilled milk. Knocks over some water. It's about to spill water. I'm like, huh? <laughs> She's just so extra. Then we see Jocelyn and Melissa meet up. I like Melissa. I'm glad she's coming back. She on her second episode in a row. 
Um, Jocelyn explains to Melissa about her meetup with Stevie. Of course, she told Melissa about him getting up, kissing her on the forehead, rubbing the belly. Melissa's like, oh, did you go to his house? And Jocelyn said, yeah, he called me, but we went over his house and this, didn't the other year. I'm like, oh, wow. Jocelyn pulls out a bag of Stevie J's underwear and put it in Melissa's face. Melissa's like, get that out of my face. What are you doing? Put that in your own face. Jocelyn talk about this to DNA because I don't trust him to take a DNA test. <sighs> that was weird. Carly Red meets up with Jasmine. Okay, this is where the episode get good. Jasmine, oh, and it was a split scene. Carly Red meets up with Jasmine. Young Jock meets up with Rob. Rod, whatever. I can't never get his name right. Um, Rob and Jasmine explain to Carly and Young Jock about they, the situation. But Carly, the girls were together and the men were together. The women and the men were. So they explained the situation. Um, it was kind of hard to listen to Jasmine and Rob, Rod, whatever his name is, explain this. Um, like, wow. I, I still kind of, I believe this all happened, but I think the baby could still not be Kirk's because they keep, they keep telling us that Rob, Rod, whatever his name is, is a scam artist. So I kind of, I'm shaky about believing the story 100%. Um, oh, while Jasmine was talking to Carly, Jasmine said, or no, Carly told Jasmine that Rob, Carly told Jasmine that Rod is a scammer and asked for receipts. Jasmine said, what does Rob have to do with this situation? He ain't got nothing to do with this. Why do we have to talk about it? Which I agree. Why did she bring that up? But then she's like, this could be fake. She asked for receipts and Jasmine had a... She had a Walmart receipt. Her receipt was super long. I'll tell you that much. She had text messages. She had videos, pictures. She had dates. She had everything. And Carly, Carly even said her confessional. She's like, I was expecting her to be shaky and not know what she talking about. But she got so many receipts. So then, um, oh, some of the receipts she said was that she lived in the same building as Rashida. He moved her in. He bought her a car. She showed the receipt of, like, the insurance. Kirk name is on the insurance. She had two phones because he showed text message. Carly, like, let me see the number because I know his number. I got it because, you know, she friends with Rashida and Kirk. She's like, oh, no, you wouldn't have this number because he got two different ones. I'm just like, Jasmine is such a thing, like. You so you're just okay with being a side piece, cause you just let her know like, oh yeah, he got two different phones, you know, cause he's with me. Wow. Um, it was a video of Jasmine, or no, yeah, of Kirk holding the baby, and the baby's like daddy, cause it's his baby. Um, Jasmine even said that Kirk brought Rashida's baby over to her house before, so the baby didn't see her before. Jock said that this could all still be fake because even though he saw videos, it could be basically photoshopped or video shopped, whatever. Like it could be them taking Kirk's face and putting it on. He was being funny, but it was funny. Young Jock was he pretty funny. He alright. Um, Carly said, "Did Kirk ever say I love you?" And Jasmine said, "Yes." And then uh, Carly was like, "Oh Lord, these these boys ain't nothing. These men ain't nothing." So that was probably the best scene of this whole episode. Cut that. We get to Scrappy. A scene that I don't care about at all. Scrappy meets with Mama D. I'm not even into Scrappy and Mama D storylines. Just so stupid to me. So basically, Scrappy said that he having problems with Bambi. Um, so they not in a good place. Um, Scrappy said that he is homeless right now because Bambi kept the house and Scrappy's just going from door to door at hotels, motels, and stuff like that. Staying on people's couch. Um, Mama D explains her situation with the mom and Ernest. And Scrappy laughs and says, isn't this the pot calling the kettle black? Because you do the same thing to me. Which is true. 100%. And I thought about that when the first scene came up. Um, Scrappy says homeless. Oh. Scrappy said he's thinking about not getting married. Because he's not about to get married just to get divorced. 
Mama D planned a dinner. She said she wanted Bambi to come, Ernest, and his mom, and herself, and Scrap. So it can be a family dinner. Then we go to a mom, a Tommy scene. Um, she meet up with one of my favorites, Karen King. I like Karen because she just reminds me of like an old school pimp, a boss. I like her. Um, she had her dog, of course, in the photo shoot. I was kind of surprised at her confessional. She didn't have the dog in her hand. Because last season, the whole confessional, she had the dog in her hand. I thought the dog was dead and stuff because it was just sitting there. It didn't move. But she didn't have the dog in her confessional, but she photo shoot was with the dog. Um, Tommy explained to Karen about what happened with the um, with her mom. Karen said, yeah, your mom drinking, blah, blah, blah. You got to break the cycle because something probably happened with her mom and you letting it continue down with you. You need to break the cycle and just, you know, get your stuff together. Um, Karen, oh, Tommy told Karen about the jail situation because Karen didn't know about that. Karen said, oh, yeah, something, something, something about Scrap. She couldn't even go to jail to go see Scrap because she's like, you know my situation. I can't go to the jailhouse because we all know Karen... Her situation, like she said, she didn't been in jail. She fell. Same with Tommy. Um, that's about it. Nothing's really special. Then we see Stevie. I like this scene a little bit. Stevie gets to his house. He walks in. He sees stuff everywhere. This is a little bit of a scripted scene because stuff was literally everywhere. Stuff was everywhere. He thinking Jocelyn there, but then he see his dog. He see a messed up boot. This was funny. I thought this was funny when he said it. He said he saw a messed up boot. So he's like, oh, this can't be Jocelyn's stuff. <laughs> and it was his daughter. His 18-year-old daughter. And she's all like, I'm 18. I'm going to be residing here now. I'm not staying with mama no more. I'm like, huh? He just, She just telling him what's going to happen. And she like, you can't just tell me. He like, you just can't just do this. This is my bachelor pass. She said, well, it wasn't summer fun because apparently in the summer he brought all his kids there. And she, he trying to convince her, no, you stay in Philly. You supposed to be in Philly. And I'm like, see, this is what I don't understand. Jocelyn is moving to Miami and you don't want her to because you want the baby to stay. But your daughter live in Philly and you trying to convince her to go. So it don't make sense. Now I guess she kind of grown, but she's still in high school. So she's not really grown. And he and she said you gonna be she gonna be finishing up school online. And he's like, I don't know nothing about no online online finishing school. No, you need to go to the schoolhouse. That was pretty funny. Um, she had her dog, and apparently her friend was there too, which I didn't understand. That must have been a scripted scene. And I thought her friend was from Basketball Wives, T Tammy, Tammy's daughter, Lyric, and then Stevie even said her 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 friend Lyric. So I really thought it was Tammy's friend daughter lyric but she looked a little bit bigger so I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Tammy's daughter from back of all lives. um basically Stevie's daughter told sell Stevie she said what you gonna tell me to get out tell me to get out tell me to get out he's like no 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 blah 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 and you can stay here I guess um she 18 so she having problems with her mom she probably just ran away she probably ran away but she really came here that's probably what happened I think. Um, Stevie said something about Jocelyn and the baby, and the girl's like, what? The daughter's like, what? This could be your baby? And I'm just like, script this scene, because there ain't no way in the world that this girl did not know that Jocelyn was pregnant with Stevie's baby. There's no way. Everybody know that. That scene ends. We get to the scene with Scrappy, Mama D, Ernest, Ernest, Mama This. I do not care about them at all. Like, it might be time for Scrappy to leave Love and Hip Hop. Mama D, her too. Like, she just extra and I'm over it. I don't care about them at all. So, nothing really happens. Um, Bambi didn't come. Um, Mama D did some more extra stuff. She pulled out a gift. As Whenever she pulled out a gift, it's always some bad news. And she always trying to be funny. And it's not never funny. She, she, she pulled out a... Um, I forget what she even pulled out. Oh, a bib or a binky, a, a pacifier and a diaper. And said, here, since you want to be a mama's boy, blah, blah, blah. Nothing. Some stupid. Who cares? We get to Carly Rae's scene, the last couple of scenes of the show. Carly Rae meets up with Rashida. Hard to watch. She told Rashida everything. Rashida was sitting there talking about she wasn't answering Carly's phone call because she thought Carly was going to be on some bull. She hearing all this stuff. She break down crying. She's like, I can't believe this. I kinda, 
I think this was a real scene. This was probably a real scene. But then we get to the scripted scene. Rashida with Kirk. She made dinner. You really expect me to believe. And she didn't even have on the same stuff she had on when she seen Carly. So the scripted scene right here. She made dinner for Kirk. And then she want to say, so I met up with Carly. And there's that and the other. You mean to tell me, I know that you calm and mature, Rashida, but you mean to tell me that you was that calm when telling your husband that I know that you've been cheating. I don't believe it at all. You know, we cut right there. Rashida knows everything. And next week, I guess we go pick up where we left off this week. Rashida confronting Kirk about the baby. Until next time. All right, but that's it for this video. Um, I'll be back here next week with episode three. Until then, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share the video on all foreign social media. Until next time, catch you later.